Hey friends, I am just wrapping up this series on kids and sweets and got a couple great questions from followers that I thought I would take the time to address. And one of them was this idea of, you know, when will my kids stop showing such a high interest in sweets and desserts? And this is a great question. I think, you know, a lot of you might be wondering the same thing. If you're taking a more no normalized approach to sweets in your home and you're starting to incorporate desserts with meals and snacks for your child, but your child is still showing a really high interest in these foods, you know, you might be wondering, am I doing this right? You know, is this ever going to end? And I want you to be encouraged. And I, w I first want to clarify something, and that is that the goal of normalizing sweets in your home for your child isn't to get your child to stop wanting or eating desserts or sweets. So it's really important to clarify that and just understand that. We just want to be able to normalize those foods for our child so that they have, you know, kind of an emotional equality with all foods so that they not only enjoy eating sweets and desserts, but also enjoy eating other foods and that they're able to kind of go between foods and eat based on what feels best in their own bodies and not just based on fear of not having access to those foods. Because what happens is if sweets or desserts are highly restricted, then a child will predominantly eat them because they're there, because they have access to them when they do get opportunities, not necessarily based on what they're feeling internally and what their cues are telling them. And so, you know, the goal of normalizing sweets in your home, again, isn't to get your child to a point where they no longer want sweets or desserts. We just want to make all these foods like an equal playing field. And when we can do that, we're supporting their ability to learn how to self-regulate all foods. And so I just wanted to clarify that because I think sometimes there's confusion with this approach and it's really important that we have the long-term view in mind when it comes to feeding our children. We wanna support them in building a positive relationship with all foods and not have certain foods up on a pedestal escalated above other things, but really to be able to enjoy a variety of different things. And this is really essential, an essential component of legalizing sugar in our homes and, you know, taking, taking the time to normalize it for our kids and integrate it into the meals and snacks that they're having so they can see desserts alongside other foods that they're used to having. So, one thing I did want to address too is, well, first, let me also clarify that excitement about sweets is not inherently a bad thing either. I think sometimes we see our kids get really excited about having certain foods and that can make us a little bit nervous, especially if it is sweets, but it's okay for your child to feel excited about eating, you know, a variety of foods. And really that's part of the enjoyment and the pleasurable aspect of eating, which is part of eating. And I think sometimes we lose touch with that. And, you know, again, that's a big part of diet culture too, that promotes this idea that food is just fuel and it shouldn't be pleasurable and it shouldn't be enjoyable. But really that's how kids are navigating and making these food choices is by what feels safe, what they enjoy, what tastes good to them. And, you know, the where we want to pay attention is if our kids are showing a, a high interest in sweets and are not able to eat other foods because they're so preoccupied with sweets. So that is a little bit different, okay? And I do have some other videos back where you can hear more about that. But essentially, when you start normalizing sweets in your home and you start offering desserts intentionally alongside meals, it might take your it might take some time for your child to trust that desserts are an indefinite part of their future and they might be excited and kind of infatuated with the desserts for a while before they'll start to kind of relax and you know show interest in other foods and again the goal is not to get them to have no interest in sugar or sweets whatsoever we just want them to trust that those foods are an indefinite part of their future so they don't feel you know, kind of compelled to have to eat it in that moment. When kids feel scarcity around sweets and desserts, they're more likely to just eat it whenever they do have access to it because they don't know when they're going to see it again in the future. So if previously you took a more restrictive approach to sweets in your home and 
you know, if you have, that's okay. Again, you were doing the best that you could with the resources and the information that you had. So if that was the case, and now you're being more intentional about liberalizing sweets in your home and offering desserts frequently with meals and snacks, you know, you might see your child constantly going for the dessert or only ever eating the dessert part of their meal and not showing interest in other foods. And that is okay. I want you to be reassured that you are doing the right thing. It just might take some time and every kid is different. It might take some time and consistency for your child to get to a point where they trust, oh, you know what? I don't have to eat all of this in one setting, you know, like I know that I'm going to have cookies again tomorrow and the next day and the next day after that. And so it just takes a lot of consistency on our part as parents for our children to really get to a place where they can trust that. Um, I like to explain it kind of like a pendulum. Okay. So if you think about a pendulum and you pull that pendulum to one side and then you let that pendulum go, what happens is it's going to swing all the way to the other side and kind of go back and forth, back and forth before it kind of evens out in the middle. So if a child has had a more restrictive, restrictive approach to sweets, it's essentially kind of like pulling them to one side of the pendulum. And then when you're taking a more relaxed approach and you're being intentional about offering it more frequently and including it in meals and snacks, Sometimes it's kind of like your child swings to the other side of the pendulum and they kind of hang out there sometimes for a little while before things kind of even out in the middle. And that's okay. We expect that. We do expect our kids to show just more excitement around dessert when they haven't had the opportunity to see it or eat it very frequently in their past. The most important thing that you can do as a parent is to be consistent. This is where I tend to see a lot of parents get stuck is because they take that step and they offer sweets more consistently. They're putting it on the menu more intentionally for their child, but they get scared and that's, it's okay to feel that, you know, you might feel worried when you see your child only ever eating dessert off their plate and wondering like, oh my gosh, they're not eating any vegetables. They're not eating any fruit. They're not touching any, you know, protein, whatever it is that's okay. It just takes time. And for some kids, it takes longer than others for them to fully get to a place where they can trust. Oh, like I've seen this before. I know I'm going to see it again, you know, and it doesn't mean they're not going to have interest in it, but they'll start to show interest in other foods again too. So be assured that that is coming and that will happen. It just really takes consistency on your part. You don't want to reel back to past behaviors or that restrictive approach to sweets, the minute you start to feel uncomfortable because that can kind of set your child back again. So just be assured you're doing the right thing. It does take time, like I said. So for kids who have had more restriction or less, you know, not frequent access to sweets, it's going to take, you know, sometimes months, months for them to repeatedly see dessert alongside their food and things that you might start noticing, like just to give you some, you know, encouragement to help you through this process. So you might start to see your child, you know, showing interest in other foods or eating other things on their plate besides the dessert, or maybe they leave a part of their dessert behind. Those, those are little signs that our kids will show us that that will help us know that they're starting to get to a point where they can trust that sweets are an indefinite part of their future and they don't feel like compelled to have to eat it every time they get it. But again, it takes consistency and I know this can be really, really hard. Um, but be assured that you are doing the right thing. It is possible to reverse that kind of restrictive mentality around sweets. But again, it takes consistency and a child needs to see it repeatedly multiple times over and over again, you know, before they'll start to understand that, that it will be a part of their future forever. So I hope this helps you. I hope this gives you a little bit of support and encouragement. I, I do have some blogs that I'll link in the comments for you if you're needing more help with this. And of course, as always, please feel free to leave any questions in the comments as well. And I'd love to help support you however I can. So, all right. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care.